Hi everyone! The new release of the platform is done. In this video we would like to highlight the key features of 3.1 release and how to get most out of them. Let's review new features and improvements one by one. By the way, using chapters on the progress bar you may jump to particular feature description. Very convenient. Ok, moving forward. Internally this release has the performance improvements and the advanced filtering tag. So let's proceed to details. The very first feature that we would like to highlight is the dashboard filters. Now you are able to filter entities by their fields, attributes and telemetry. In order to show you the significant adding, we have created 100,000 devices that are assigned to 10,000 customers. Now as a tenant administrator we will create the dashboard that you have just seen from the scratch. Let's add an entity table widget. We are going to find the entity table widget in the widget bundle called cards. Now we are going to create a new alias, the devices. In our case we would like to show all 100,000 devices in the table. So we will use a device type field and specify the default type. Let's add more columns to our table. For example the installation date. The date is in UTC UNIX timestamp by default. A custom data processing function helps us to show it in a human readable format. Let's also add the firmware version, battery level and temperature columns. And remove the device type column. You may notice that the widget loaded the data quite fast. That's because we only load entities that are on the first page. Although we do calculate the total number of entities. All operations like storing or filtering are happening using database queries. You may sort by attributes or by latest values. The full text search is working based on the raw values of the fields. Now we proceed with creating of the first filter. Switch to the edit mode and click on the filters icon. You will see the dialog to create many filters. Click add filter. We will name it the dashboard filter. Now let's add filter based on battery level. Add key filter. Pressing the button add key filter. Our devices report the battery level as a telemetry data. So we are going to change the key type. Now populate the key name. Please be careful there. The key name should be exactly the same as it reported by the device. Selecting the value type, this would be the numeric, since battery level is a numeric value. Now add a filter. For your information, filter may be simple or complex. Let's show all devices with battery level less than 20. We have saved our filter, but there is no effect on the widget. That's because you should specify this filter in widget's data source. Widget can use only one filter at a single point in time. Notice that a customer user who has no access to edit the dashboard can still change the filters or the thresholds. If you don't want your users to change the filters, you can disable this feature and hide the filter edit window. Now let's assume you want to show devices with battery level between 10 and 20%. We're going to edit filter and add more operation. This would be greater than 10. This is quite simple. 
Now let's imagine that we want to show devices with battery level less than 10% and greater than 95%. In order to achieve this, we need to use the complex filter, remove existing operations and add one complex. Here we can change logical operations from AND to OR. You may also use a combination of complex filters. Assuming you want to show devices with battery level in range between 0 to 5% and in range from 10 to 15%. So we are going to combine two complex filters into one. The result logical expression should look like this. Battery level greater than 0 and battery level less than 5. Or battery level greater than 10 and battery level less than 15. Now let's add a new more filters with different value types. Notice that all top-level key filters are always joined with AND operation. So, moving forward to new improvement of the platform. We are going to select Maps Bundle, the latest values widget and finally open Street Map to demonstrate you the performance of the map widget. We will use the same entity alias and same filter. Also, need to check latitude and longitude attributes. Now, in advanced settings, we will select the use marker clustering. Our experienced users may notice that the map is working much faster now. That's because we've optimized the WebSockets APIs to work with thousands of entities simultaneously. But what will happen if we change the filter to show 100,000 devices? You may see that the map widget displays only 10,000 of 100,000 devices. Why does it happen? We build things board to be used by thousands of concurrent users. The map widget subscribes to the updates of the entities that are shown on the widget. This means one user creates a subscription that monitors 10,000 entities. If a thousand users will subscribe to 100,000 entities, it will create 100 million subscriptions, so we don't recommend allowing users to see more than 10,000 records simultaneously. You may always design your dashboard to drill down to certain districts first. This protects your ThingsBot server from consuming too much memory. Of course, if you have only 10 users, you can reconfigure the platform to show more entities. 
This is done in two places, on the widget level, advanced settings limit of entities to load and on the server level in Thingsboard YML. Let's restore the filter to show less devices and jump to the next improvement. For some critical breaches we definitely should have received the alarms. Assuming the fact that alarm rule chains are configured already, by adding the alarm widget we will see a list of alarms. Filtering is applicable for alarms as well. Besides the entity filter, now you can also filter the alarms by status, severity, and finally the alarm types. We've configured two types of alarms, low battery and high temperature. Let's show only high temperature. Your users may also change the alarm type list. So, the alarm widget now is able to show alarms from multiple entities. This is convenient but also has some limitations. Subscribing to alarms from more than 10,000 entities is a heavy operation, so we don't recommend to do this. If you want to show all alarms generated for the particular tenant or customer, you can use good old feature called alarm propagation. This feature allows you to propagate alarms from devices to related entities, assets, customers or even tenant. When we created our topology via script, we have also related all our devices to customers and also all our customers to tenant via managed relation. This simplifies propagation of alarms. Also, you need to make sure that the propagate alarm flag is set in the create alarm rule node. Now let's show all alarms propagated to a current customer or tenant. We will use new entity type called current owner. Also, don't forget to remove the filter. By the way, it's usually much faster to search for the propagated alarms of one entity instead of searching for alarms for thousands of entities. Now let's go back to our filters and learn how to use dynamic or external value source for filtering. In some cases, it's not very convenient to use hard-coded parameters. Also, your users may expect that the configured filtering will be persisted so that upon next login to the system, the same filtering parameters should be applied. It's also important to ensure that after the page refreshing, the filtering parameters are not the same. Let's see how to implement this based on the battery level filter. First, we need to create a widget that will allow us editing of users' attributes. Use an input widget Update multiple attributes, to be more precise. Create a new alias, for instance the current user. Add the battery level threshold attribute. You may change the label to max battery level for your convenience. In advanced step, choose the value type, integer in our case. Now it's time to edit the battery level filter itself. You may find this icon. It switches the value source to dynamic source. Choose current user source and the respective attribute which should be used by filter, battery level threshold. And don't forget to disable the value editability by the user in order to avoid false filtering. Now we can try our dynamic filter in action. For example, let's set up the maximum battery level to 51. Or 9. 
It works and persists filter parameters as an attribute of the user. So, if we log in at a different user, we will be able to set up different filtering parameters. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned.